Welcome back to Bombastic Nation and Ting and Ting and Ting. Back with some more vibes for all year. And we want to go back to Africa and Ting, you know what I mean? This one is called The History of Nigeria Explained in Six Minutes. 3,000 Years of Nigerian History. Yes, man, and you know what I mean? I have a lot of friends from Nigeria. You know, what going on Adamo. <laughs> but anyway, let's get into this one here. Let's YouTube and Sim Sima. Nigeria, the most populous nation in Africa, with nearly 200 million people, a variety wow. of spoken languages, including the third largest English speaking population on earth, has a long history stretching back to the oldest identified civilization in West Africa, known today as the Nok culture. They were master sculptors in a variety of materials ranging from terracotta to bronze. The Nok were centuries ahead of their neighbors and were smelting iron weapons by at least 550 BC and perhaps as early as 1000 BC. This enabled the Nok to hold influence over an area northeast of the Niger River, as large as modern day France. Although little is known about the Nok, their trade routes exporting bronze and gold reached all the way to Western Europe. Unfortunately, since the 1970s, there has been a large amount of looting of Nok sites in the 1990s, see, in history, they see the Africans, they traveled a long way too. It made it seem like if they were just there, but you know, they had to have been adventurers and travelers and then, you know, and they didn't seem to be conquering other nations, but they seem to show up a lot in other nations. Some crews employed over a thousand diggers each day, with Nock sculpture showing up in Europe, the US, and Japan. The Nock disappeared as mysteriously as they arrived. However, their knowledge in sophisticated metallurgy and mining techniques would be passed down to successor civilizations. The powerful Yoruba city of Ife would perfect casting techniques, creating realistic portraits of their nobles and leaders that have survived till today. The sophisticated level of realism captured in metal, not seen since the classical world, would not be matched elsewhere until the Italian Renaissance. Ife was ruled by Oni, a line of divine kings said to be descended from... See, you know, this was way before, you know, the the masters came into the play. They were doing all this casting and stuff back then. I wonder how much of, of it was uh, looted. Uh, how much of that history was not recorded so we don't know that all that was done by the africans or is it deliberately you know what i'm saying kept in the on the wraps you know because nobody wants them to think that this civilization of people was intelligent because of the economic Posit positives for them for those that colonize that these people bring in the form of labor from a doesn't mean they didn't have great the last prince of the Yoruba city of Ife would found the Oyo kingdom that reached its height around 1400 and maintained long distance trading routes protected by the kingdom's formidable cavalry force to the southwest the Edo people of the empire of Benin would also learn metallurgy techniques from the Ife and constructed one of the most impressive feats of engineering and the largest earthenware structure ever erected, the walls of Benin, which enclosed an area of over 2,500 square miles. In all, over 9,000 miles of walls comprise this megastructure. Combined with their formidable military, it is no wonder why the kingdom of Benin was incredibly stable and prosperous over such a long period of time. To the north of Edo, according to legend, was a kingdom ruled over by a line of female queens, one of whom married an adventuring hero from Baghdad in modern-day Iraq. Their sons would rule over a collection See, of powerful cities. See that mix going on there? Over the centuries, House of Land would unite for short periods of time. However, squabbling and intrigue was the norm. Throughout this period, they maintained amicable relations with the Mali Empire, their economic competitor to the northwest where many Islamic clerics migrated from to join the courts of the Islamic urban elite of the Hausa kingdoms. The Igbo kingdom of Nuri was ruled by a priest king and expanded its territory through sending converts to spread their faith in surrounding cities and towns. The kingdom reached its furthest extent between 11 and 1400. 
Encroached upon by the rise of Benin, and later the Atlantic slave trade, it appears to have maintained its authority well into the 16th century, and remnants of the religious hierarchy persisted until the establishment of colonial Nigeria. Jukun and Igala were two other formidable kingdoms that arose in the 14th century, and by the 16th, Igala was waging war on the kingdom of Benin, challenging their longtime supremacy and commercial trade in the region, and with the arrival of the Portuguese, became involved in the inception of the transatlantic slave trade. From the 1500s through 1800s. See, they, 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 when they went there, they think these people weren't smart enough and to be to have kingdoms and stuff like that. Or they knew it, but they totally just ignored it. You know what I mean? It's not our type of uh, uh, you know system, so it's, it has to be uncivilized. You know, it has to not be good. So, not to mention bringing in your own system of things is going to control the population if they're not used to that system. Many of the kingdoms in this region became extremely wealthy through the trade in precious metals and slaves. However, as the abolishment of the slave trade became widespread throughout the Western world, their fortunes began to stagnate. In 1804, the Sokoto Caliphate would conquer and unite the Hausa kingdoms. At its height, the Caliphate linked over 30 different emirates and was populated by over 10 million people, forming the most powerful state in the region. Oh. In his conquest, it captured approximately 2.5 million non-Muslim slaves, whom they put to work in large plantations and heavily incentivized to convert to a more comfortable life. In 1851, under the pretext of ending the slave trade in the Kingdom of Lagos, the British bombarded the city and installed a ruler they favored. Ten years later, they annexed the city in 1861 establishing the crown colony of Lagos. Lagos has been a prosperous commercial center ever since. The Royal Niger Company was established in 1879 to administer the region, and by 1900 had conquered all of southern Nigeria, destroying much of the fabled walls of Benin. The company was disestablished that same year. The Protectorate of Southern Nigeria was established, and the conquest of the Zakoto Empire began in 1900. And by 1903, all of modern-day Nigeria was under British control. The colony and protectorate of Nigeria lasted for 46 years and was governed through a system called indirect rule, where regional emirs and local rulers were given wide authority as long as the colonial government was allowed to conduct its business and gather taxation. In 1960, the First Republic of Nigeria obtained its independence from the British Empire, which was weakened after fighting the Second World War. In 1967, the Republic of Bifra was declared in the southeast of Nigeria, fueled by the persecution of the Igbo living in northern Nigeria, and control over the lucrative oil production in the Niger Delta played a major role See, they're in always fighting conflict. over those resources. It's all over 150,000 soldiers killed and millions displaced. The civil war initiated a series of military leaders of Nigeria, lasting after the civil war had ended with the United Nigeria. Following the assassination of General Murtala Mohammed, his successor initiated a process of disestablishing military rule and bringing back a republic. This republic was short-lived, lasting from 1979 to 1983, when it was overthrown again. After eight years of rule by General Ibrahim, he re-established a democracy that lasted for less than a year, which was overthrown by General Sani Abacha. Abacha died mysteriously and was buried without an autopsy. His successor again re-established a democracy that has lasted till the current day. This has been Epimetheus, and I hope you enjoyed that overview of Nigerian history. Yeah, that, that was a cool overview there, man. You know, from great kingdoms, you know, uh, B.C. and A.D., yeah, all the way up to colonization, you know what I mean? Uh, that kind of changed the way you see the narrative, especially when you realize uh, that they were doing things that was... With the artwork, you know, the working copper and iron, I think it is. They're doing that stuff back then, you know. People don't, don't think of that kind of things when you think of Africa. You don't. You think of uh, starving children, you know, wars and, and strive, you know. And it, the, the, the struggle between the, uh, the tribes there sort of mirrors the struggle between, you know, when the... The Mongols came in in Europe, and then the Vikings came in, and they fight for the land, and they all fighting for the resources. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, man, thank you all for listening. This was really interesting. I really enjoyed this year. Hope you guys enjoyed it too. But don't keep watching. Yeah, click that bubble, click that box, keep watching, binge watch. I tell you. 
but anyway uh i'm gonna leave the link in the description to this video go check out this channel they, they have some other good stuff there you know you could check it out you know what i mean it's good stuff you get to get educated <laughs> anyway man thanks for listening and watching and, and enjoying and eating the best snacks that you have okay in the meantime take care of each other cool runnings